quarter was a tremendous quarter for us because we had a huge volatility on the commodity side and therefore our stock exchange on the commodity on the gas and power side right had great numbers great financials the volatility was high everybody's talking about the gas prices and the power prices in these days and quite frankly we are benefiting from those volatility in those prices are you expecting that to continue well into the new year currently it's ongoing it's an ongoing um, a situation and we, we believe it might slow down a little bit but over the course of the year it's pretty clear the global uncertainty the the level of uh, volatility will continue not just on the commodity side but as well as on the Eurex side on the derivative side which is a very important driver for our business um, let's talk a bit, a bit also about ESG and those products because you're cl clearly enlarging your offerings there as well do you see that demand keeps on growing for those products? It's very clear, Annette. ESG is the name of the game in these days in the financial industry. We have acquired the third largest player, ISS, Institutional Shareholder Services, which is famous for proxy, for governance, for social, and for, for the E, for the environmental um, uh, ratings, and we have acquired those. They're number three after MSCI and Sustainalytics. And this is something we continue to see double digit, high number of growth, and we expect this to continue. It's not in the short term, but Eurex, Euro Clearing, will clearly benefit from the decision of the European Commission that um, Euro Clearing has to be in the Eurozone or in Europe, um, moving away from London. How much do you yeah, anticipate to benefit from that? Firstly, I like the spin of your question, Annette, because right, everybody is saying the fact that they are extending the exemption now for three years until mid of 2025 doesn't this cause some kind of uh, resistance on the on the client side which is by the way not the case so I like the spin and it's indeed true when I started as uh, at the helmet of Deutsche Börse some four years ago we had a market share of 1% meanwhile we have a market share of roughly 22-23% and the fact that Commissioner McGuinness is really stating we want to ensure that we have further capacity in the EU27 is of highest and paramount importance for us, and that's good for us. It plays to our favor. Um, do clients already earlier move to Deutsche Börse or to alternatives in Europe um, because they clearly know there will be an end to Euro clearing in London? That's exactly the case, right? The ECB and the EU Commission. They make a big statement. They basically say, right, like ESMA, that at the end of the day, having the risk outside of EU27 is not acceptable. And CCP risk is systemic risk. And therefore, they demand the buy side, the asset managers, and the sell side, the banks, to transfer and to switch, right, their volumes, ideally, uh, to Europe. And uh, the protagonists are doing this, and we have some laggards as always in the industry. Um, that's the classic question now. Are you looking into M&A, um, unorganic growth? Uh, it is a classic question. It's a classic answer. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We have, uh, if you look into the year uh, 2021, 20, uh, right, we have had a tremendous growth on the M&A side, given our acquisitions in um, Crypto Finance AG, in ISS, what I was talking about earlier, and as well on the UBS fund side, um, uh, where we acquired uh, the remaining 49%. And we will continue doing M&A. We know we see the market developing. We are not in a rush. We are careful. And we are hopefully as smart as we have been in the past.